the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good evening, everyone. In our gospel today, we hear how Zacchaeus climbs a sycamore tree in order to catch a glimpse of Jesus. But we pause at the beginning of this Holy Mass to ask ourselves how far we would be willing to go in our searching of Jesus. And we now ask the Lord to extend the same compassion to us as he showed his Zacchaeus, as we ask pardon for our sins. Lord Jesus, you are kind and full of compassion. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you grant salvation to all who come to you. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you always seek out the lost. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, by whose gift your faithful offer you right and praiseworthy service, grant, we pray, that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things you have promised. Through Christ our Lord. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. In your sight, Lord, the whole world is like a grain of dust that tips the scales, like a drop of morning dew falling on the ground. Yet you are merciful to all, because you can do all things and overlook men's sins so that they can repent. Yes. You love all that exists. You hold nothing of what you have made in abhorrence. For had you hated anything, you would not have formed it. And how, had you not willed it, could a thing persist? How be conserved, if not called forth by you? You spare all things, because all things are yours, Lord, lover of life. You, whose imperishable spirit is in all. Little by little, therefore, you correct those who offend. You admonish and remind them of how they have sinned, so that they may abstain from evil and trust in you, Lord. This is the word of the Lord.
The second reading, a reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We pray continually that our God will make you worthy of his call and by his power fulfill all your desires for goodness and complete all that you have been doing through faith. Because in this way, the name of our Lord Jesus Christ will be glorified in you and you in him by the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. To turn now, brothers, to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and how we shall all be gathered round him. Please do not get too excited too soon or alarmed by any prediction or rumour or any letter claiming to come from us, implying that the day of the Lord has already arrived. This is the word of the Lord. Blessings on the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heavens. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus entered Jericho and was going through the town when a man whose name was Zacchaeus made his appearance. He was one of the senior tax collectors and a wealthy man. He was anxious to see what kind of man Jesus was, but he was too short and could not see him for the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to catch a glimpse of Jesus, who was to pass that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and spoke to him. Zacchaeus, come down. Hurry, because I must stay at your house today. And he hurried down and welcomed him joyfully. They all complained when they saw what was happening. He has gone to stay at a sinner's house, they said. But Zacchaeus stood his ground and said to the Lord, Look, sir, I'm going to give half my property back to the poor, and if I have cheated anybody, I will pay him back four times the amount. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek out and save what was lost. The Gospel of the Lord. In our Gospel, we just listened to the familiar yet touching story of Zacchaeus. The only problem is that such stories can become too familiar to us, that we think we know all about them and so miss some of the challenges the story contains for us. And so this evening, I'll just pick out three of them that might otherwise be overlooked. Firstly, at the very beginning of the story, we heard that Jesus entered Jericho and was going through the town. So many times in the Gospels, we see him passing by or through a place. And more times than not, if he is not stopped, he will keep going. 
Think, for example, of the blind man calling out to him. If he didn't, Jesus would have kept going. Likewise, he constantly passes through our lives. He comes every day in one form or another. He has already come today and will come again this evening. But will we recognize him? Are we even expecting him to come? Or in what person will he come? In what place? In what experience? To be really ready to meet Christ in our lives, then we have to be prepared to meet him in any and all experiences. Our hearts must be always open to him. Otherwise, he will keep walking through our lives and we will never really get to truly encounter him. Secondly, <clears throat> we are told that Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus and was anxious to see what kind of man Jesus was. Now, there is nothing new in this. From the time Jesus was born, people wanted to see him. For example, this desire was in the hearts of the shepherds when the angels told them about the babe in Bethlehem. This longing was also in the hearts of the Gentiles who approached Philip with the request, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Even Herod wanted to see Jesus and got his wish during Christ's passion. But that encounter made no difference to Herod. However, in Zacchaeus' case, we are not at first given the reason why he wanted to see him. Was it just mere curiosity towards a person whom he heard so many stories? Or was there a deeper reason? Whatever the reason, it is a good example of someone who comes looking for something only to find or discover something altogether more wonderful and changed his life forever. And it can be the same for us if we truly open up to God's grace. Because like Zacchaeus, there is something in all of us that needs to be changed. For example, are we full of compassion and love? Or do we have a tendency to condemn and judge others? To gossip and so destroy people's reputations? Are we welcome and open? Would we go to Zacchaeus' house? Or would we be among those in the crowd, muttering about Jesus, mixing with the wrong sort of people? As I said, we all have something that needs to be changed. Likewise, we all came here this evening for whatever reason. For some, it may be to pray for someone. Others, perhaps, just to fulfill their Sunday obligation. But very few, I would say, came looking to be changed. But like Zacchaeus, we will meet the Lord in Holy Communion. And we should use that opportunity and ask him for his help with the changes we need to make in order to become better people. So we have a choice this evening. We can allow our meeting with Christ in Holy Communion to help change our lives. Or we can be like Herod, get to meet Jesus, but allow that meeting to have no effect on our lives. And we walk out those doors at the end of this Holy Mass 
the exact same people as, we, as when we entered. And finally, we're told that Zacchaeus was too short and could not see him for the crowd. Yet in spite of being a rich man, he did not hesitate to climb a sycamore tree to catch a glimpse of Jesus. And there is a message in this for us as well, in that very often we are not able to see Jesus in our own lives because we are crowded by other people and the way they think, or because we're influenced by the media, or perhaps because we're too proud. But to truly see Jesus clearly, then we too have to get away from the crowd and risk being different, in that we don't follow the crowd or their ways. If Zacchaeus stayed with the crowd, he would never have got to meet Jesus. Also, we have to be prepared to lose our so-called dignity or pride and become humble in heart so we too can climb our own tree. The word holy in Greek actually means someone who is different, someone set apart. As Catholics, this is what we are called to be. But do we have the courage to be truly different? Someone set apart. Zacchaeus was, and it made all the difference to him. It can for us too. But do we have the courage for this? We stand now to profess our faith. <clears throat> I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Jesus entered the home of Zacchaeus the sinner and brought salvation to his house. We offer the same, he offers the same gift to each of us as he enters our hearts this evening. So let us bring our petitions to him in a spirit of confident trust that he will answer all our needs. We pray for the church and especially for our own parish community as we struggle together to be living witness to Christ's presence in our midst. Lord, hear us. We ask that God may make us worthy of the life he has called us to live and that it will be expressed in the love and care we show to all who cross our paths on a daily basis, especially to the members of our own families. Lord, hear us. In today's gospel story, 
We hear how Zacchaeus was prepared to make amends to all the people in his life whom he may have hurt. May we look into our lives and do likewise. Lord, hear us. We remember those who are most in need of our prayers, the sick, the lonely, the poor, and those who have lost their way. May we be open to assisting them in whatever way we can. Lord, hear us. We pray for peace in our world and that nations will be reconciled with one another. We remember in particular refugees and displaced people whose misery is compounded by the onset of winter. Lord, hear us. We pray for our dead. We pray for the recently deceased Brian Mackey, Aaron O'Neill. At this time we pray for Gordon McLean, James Lappin, Kathleen Patrick and Brendan McConville. We pray especially during this Holy Mass for Philomena Hoy, whose first anniversary occurs at this time, John Dorden, Mayo Lassa and Sarah Mayo, Mayo Laka and Bai Cola. Francisco Victor Traves, Hugo Peria. We pray tomorrow for Molly Murphy, whose first anniversary occurs, Maria Thomasina Falconcellos, Dr. Eileen Fleming, Teresa McCaffrey, Rosaline Judge, Patrick Halpenny, Kathleen Keegan, and Ernest Elliott. May their souls and souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. And for a few moments in the quietness of our own hearts, we now make our own private prayers and petitions. Lord, hear us. God of mercy and compassion, you never write off anyone. May this give us hope for our own lives and serve as a model in our dealings with others. We ask this through Christ our Lord. We now have our Sunday collection, please. And as a collection we've taken up, I just bring a few notices to your attention. The annual mass commemorating our deceased loved ones who have passed away during the last year will be celebrated here in this church this coming Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock. And November deadlifts are now available at the back of the church. This coming Tuesday is the Feast of All Saints and it is a holy day of obligation. And Mass times for this feast are the Vigil Mass will take place on Monday at 7 o'clock in St. Patrick's Church, and then on Tuesday morning at 10 o'clock in St. Patrick's, and then in this church on Tuesday evening at 7 o'clock. And there will be a collection at these Masses for the Central Diocesan Fund, and that's the blue envelope. And First Friday Exposition of the Blessed Sacrament will resume in St. Patrick's Church this coming Friday, beginning after the 10 a.m. Mass and concluding at half 12. And the Priest Jews Collection will take place at all Masses next weekend, and that is the pink envelope, along with the Standard Sunday Collection, which is the white envelope. And we're hoping to start PALS up again, and so we're looking for volunteers. And so if you're over 18 and interested in volunteering for PALS Children's Liturgy, you're invited to a meeting in the Pastoral Centre on the 9th of November at half seven. Or if you can't attend that meeting, there's a telephone number in the bulletin, and you're asked to ring that any day after four o'clock.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, become for you a pure oblation, and for us a holy outpouring of your mercy, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering cancelled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a solemn way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Amen, our Archbishop, Michael, our Auxiliary Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
you'll show me the path of life, the fullness of your joy in your presence.
Breathe in me, O Holy Spirit, that my thoughts may all be holy. Act in me, O Holy Spirit, that my work too may be holy. Draw my heart, O Holy Spirit, that I love but what is holy. Strengthen me, O Holy Spirit, to defend all that is holy. Guard me then, O Holy Spirit, that I always may be holy. And just before the final blessing, just a gentle reminder, even though I'm sure you don't need one, you're all looking forward to that extra hour in bed tomorrow morning. Clocks go back one hour tonight. And let us pray. May the working of your power, O Lord, increase in us, in, we pray, so that renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift for receiving what they promise through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May the glory of God's grace touch your hearts and minds, and may your response to his grace be one of joy and a change of heart. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.